have a groundwater treatment system installed at this site. It's called a permeable reactive barrier or PRB. And it's a subsurface treatment, so there's no above ground structures after it's installed. And it's completely passive, so it requires no external energy input. And it relies on microbes that exist naturally in the soil and in the water. And this treatment is converting nitrate um, in the water, in the groundwater, to nitrogen gas. So that's happening naturally um, via microbial respiration and metabolism. And nitrogen gas is completely harmless. It makes up 80% of our atmosphere. So with this treatment, we're converting nitrate, which is a nutrient and in excess is a pollutant. We're converting that all the way to nitrogen gas and completely removing it from the water. Well, as we're all all too aware these days that our surface waters you know, are, are impacted uh, specifically by nitrogen. An excess of nitrogen is coming in from on land from a variety of sources uh, and all of that goes into the groundwater and all of that discharges right offshore here and brings all the whatever happened in there winds up out there and so that excess of nitrogen is what's causing these algal blooms, excessive algal blooms. Uh, it's also causing uh, changes in uh, even pH and other things that are important to the biota out there. Dissolved oxygen gets impacted. All that algae dies and sucks the air out. So nobody really is aware all the time of groundwater discharge. It's probably the leading input of nitrogen getting into these bays. So we have been studying this uh, system for a while now. First studying it as a small treatment cell and that treatment cell worked really well. We published some results on that in um, Ecological Engineering Journal and that's available for anyone who's interested in reading that. And so then after we installed the full 100 foot barrier, we've had about a year to monitor that. We've been monitoring it seasonally and so far the results are really promising. We've seen that in the inland groundwater there's about one to seven milligrams per liter of nitrogen and then in the effluent, the treated water, there's 0.1 milligrams. So overall on average there's like a 90, greater than 90 percent removal efficiency. So we're really excited about these results and what's, what's going on here is that we have the permeable reactive media which is wood chips and a gravel mixture and the wood chips are slowly being consumed over time by microbes and the gravel actually increases the permeability of the media so water is attracted to the barrier. So we're really maximizing the amount of groundwater flow and um, the groundwater treatment that's possible with this, with this PRB. And what makes our work unique in Cornell is that we have the ability with uh, expertise of personnel and equipment that enables us to be able to map out and measure not only what's in that water discharging but the rate of discharge. And that's important because all the shoreline is not the same. Some, some areas like this one have a lot of uh, nutrients coming through, nitrogen, as well as high discharge rates. And we were able to quantify that taking that information and using it for remedies. There's a lot of uh, water quality initiatives going on, as you know, and we see PRBs as a tool in the toolbox that are complementary to all of the other uh, water quality improvements that are ongoing, like improved septic systems, improved fertilization practices, and living shorelines, all of these other types of things that are being used to improve water quality are really important and PRBs are complementary to that. They can be used alongside those types of treatment uh, to help provide immediate water quality relief and to help meet nitrogen load reduction targets. We put in a small little permeable reactive barrier of wood chips basically behind a section of the bulkhead. And at the same time, that was about 2015, at the same time, uh, we were fortunate to hook up with Molly and Stony Brook to help do some research on that. And so it enabled us to have a pilot that we put in on our own expense in Stony Brook. Uh, you know, there was a Professor Nils Volkenborn we worked with very closely and 
Molly was a PhD student under him. So that all came out of that, and that led to us taking that information and going to the uh, Community Preservation Fund in Southampton and applying to put a 100-foot-long PRB in based on what we already had piloted and we were successful in getting that grant. And we've been monitoring it, and we've partnered again with the Clean Water Institute and Mills Wolkenborn. Stony Brook is helping us to uh, do some of the monitoring and re continued monitoring and research. Independent researchers have found that PRBs can last for decades, uh, even more than 30 years, some studies suggest. And although PRBs do require a significant amount of money up front because we need to characterize the site to make sure the site is appropriate and we need to install the PRB. Um, those are significant, significant costs up front, but because they last so long and they really require no maintenance after installation, they become very cost effective. PRBs are mentioned in the Suffolk County Subwatershed Plan as being cost effective similar to other nitrogen reduction technologies. So um, we think that, yeah, for these reasons, they're a really promising technology to continue working on and studying and to continue to improve the installation methods so that they are more cost effective and um, more efficient. It's treating nitrogen, it's atmospheric deposition, it's fertilizer, it's legacy, it's septic, mm -hmm. and it's treating it right before it discharges. So you're getting an immediate relief in that area kind of a triage until all the other things, good things hopefully happening inland are go into effect. So it's filling that gap uh, before we can do better things with our land use inland, you know, we can get some relief. So that makes it a little unique. That's something we can do now. And that we've actually expanded it now to uh, other areas of Long Island. We got a similar work now in Sagaponic uh, Georgia Capon, Akabonic Harbor, Shirley. So it's expanded rapidly with our ability to evaluate, assess, and remediate. 